data augmentation is a very important topic to discuss and also know about when you should use it, how you can use data augmentation to generate more variation, have your models generalize better when you train it on your data set. Could also be that you don't have enough data in your data set, then data augmentation can actually come to rescue. Let's just jump straight into the Autolytics documentation. Inside the Guides tab, we cover pretty much everything that you need to know to become a computer vision engineer, or basically just what you need to know if you're training update takes and computer vision models in general. So here we have a specific guide for data augmentation using Autolytics YOLO. So there's tons of different ways to do data augmentation. At the end of the day, it's basically just a technique we use to generate more data. Could be that you have, let's say, 500 images, then we can go in and apply Usually you apply a data augmentation, so you generate 2x or 3x more images with the exact same amount of images that you have. So you don't have to capture more images, you don't have to label more images, you just use your existing data set and apply augmentations on top of that. And by augmentation, it's basically just making changes to the data, so it has different visual appearance. In the first image here, we can see we have an original image, then we have six different augmentation strategies. The one thing is a horizontal flip. If you draw a line down, it's basically just mirroring. So we do a horizontal flip. Could be that we have a data set with dogs only pointing in this direction or whatever object that you want to detect. Then if you run that and you just train on that specific data set, you have 500 dogs just pointing in this direction here. Then when you run inference with the models and you have a dog pointing in the other direction or basically some other rotation or orientation, then you might have a problem actually detecting the dog. This is a very simplified example. There's tons of different cases out there. Could also be that you want to, you don't have enough data in one side of the image, then you can basically apply this horizontal flip. You can also do a vertical flip. That could be if you want to do like a top down image view, you detect something on a board or a conveyor belt or something, it might make sense to do a vertical flip as well. So that will be along this axis. You can do a crop, you can do zooming effect with your data augmentation. That's also a very good technique because if you just have a static camera, you capture images, then if you have changes in the variation, if your working distance is going to change when you actually get your models out there and running, it might not generalize well to have this zoom effect change or a change in the working distance. Median blur, if you have a moving camera, for example, you could get blur, motion blur in your images, then it's good to apply the data augmentation that blurs the image while you're training. You can change the contrast, hue, saturation value, gamma, gamma value, and so on. Even just brightness, like you could act like it's just brightness, just applying 10% brightness so it both becomes lighter and also darker. That can make a huge difference in your data set and also just generalize better because the lighting conditions, they very often change depending on what environment you're running it in. So a very big problem or error that most people are making is that they train the model on a specific data set. Then once they get it out into production, out in the real world running, it's not working in the exact expected way as they did inside the environment that they trained the model in. So the hardest problem in computer vision is actually get accurate models, but we also need to be able to generalize across different environments, different edge cases. We want to be able to cover all of that so we don't run into like problems or edge cases that we can solve once our model is running in production. So yeah, expand a data set. This is why we apply data augmentation, improve generalization, one of the most important things when we're working with computer vision data, but also the performance of our computer vision models, reduce overfitting. So again, if we just have dogs pointing in this direction, we train on that, the model might act like just overfit and only be able to learn that specific example. And it's just going to enhance the performance in general. So these things here, we already went over it. Here are some example configurations. So when you train it, you could do it with annotation software. There's a lot of annotation software out there. They support data augmentation directly. When you train the Autodex models, we also apply some data augmentation, but you could go in and control that yourself. So when you call the train, we specify the Coco dataset or the custom dataset that you want to use. Then we can specify all these different arguments. You can see that inside the training uh, function, what arguments are supported. So here we have our H, 
is V value. So we have a hue, saturation and value. We specify the values that we want. We can flip, we can have mosaic. So it's basically just going to create a mosaic of our images. Do this as default as well. Auto augment, translate, scale, brightness, all these things here you can do. You can also use a configuration file. I would probably recommend that compared to just having all these values that you need to set in your training script. So then launch the training with the Python API. So you can have your config where everything is basically just stored in there. It's not good code practice to hard code your values into the software. It's better just to have a configuration file where you specify all the values. So you can apply color space augmentation. We kind of already went over that. I haven't really played around with that too much. Usually that's not the best augmentations that you can do compared to some of the other ones. Saturation could be a very good value to go in and, and change. Brightness is probably the most used data augmentation if you're talking about like changing the lighting, changing the color values in our images. Because this is our original image, maybe sometimes we have more sunlight, maybe sometimes, or if we need to work in a dark environment or at night as well, let's say that we want to have like self-driving cars or whatever, we want to take objects outside, the lighting conditions is gonna change throughout the whole day. Then we have geometric transformations. We can rotate, we can flip 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So this is pretty much just the same as mirroring 90 degrees could be useful in some cases, probably not with the parrot here. Translation, you can do that as well. You can move them around. This is also going to happen if you just use the mosaic. Scaling, very important as well to generalize across different distances, working distances, make sure that your model has this zooming effect as well. And again, all these things here can be done even if you just capture images from one specific camera you can still apply these data augmentation and you should every time you create a data set it's very very important and recommended to go in and use data augmentation you can use some sharing haven't really used that too much before but this is also a very very nice thing that we can do i've kind of like like to, to do rotation a bit more we can also do perspective so you can change the camera perspective how it sees the optic this could also be helpful in some examples. We have flip up and down, flip left, right. So this is just mirroring. BGR channel swaps, not really too important. We have the mosaic being done as default with Autolytics as well. So it's going to divide them into these tiles, cover different areas of the image and just make sure that your model act like generalizes better. You could also just do a mix up here. I probably not recommend that. It's better to just do some control environment. But again, it's good to know what options are available out there. Cut mix, copy paste. So here you can basically just like copy paste on top of the image, flip it around and so on. So you can add more synthetic data. This is also just another form of synthetic data. Here we copy pasting this image with this image. So it could be that you have specific optics in one image, which, should all, which could also occur in another image. And we want to make sure that the model also just learns from that environment or the surrounding environments around it when it does the optic detection. Classic specific augmentation, that could also be a very important point or a, a step to use. Random erasing, haven't really gotten good results with that, but could be like, this is a really hardcore step to do if you want to make sure that your model does not overfit. You can go and read more about it here. I went through all the different steps here. The ones that I pretty much use most is rotation, brightness, horizontal flipping. So basically just mirroring the image. You could also do a vertical flip, depends on the use case and so on. But if you have a person or whatever, it doesn't really make sense to rotate the person 90 degrees or flip it upside down. Make sure, go in and check out the documentation here. Try it out when you do it in your next training run because this can actually increase your performance of the model and not only increase, but make your model generalize way better. This is very important to know. Make sure that you understand each of these steps, the different augmentation techniques that you can apply and then test it out next time you train an Autolytics model. Hope you learned a ton of this video here, guys. Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy training.